I hope everybody has a copy of this uh, book, The Plays of Nandwal Bodhi Chitras. If not, please raise your hands. We start by setting a proper motivation, which consists of three parts. <coughs> Keeping in mind both what to visualize and how to visualize it. Start by visualizing the refuge field with his Shakyamuni, his Holiness the Dalai Lama, or any enlightened being whom you feel close to, whom you revere, hold in high regard in relation to wisdom and compassion. Visualize them in the space in front of you. And how to visualize them? Like the parent who looks at the only child with unconditional love and compassion. So imagine that they're looking at you with this great love and compassion. Visualize the Bodhicitta field, your two kind parents, mother on the left and father on the right, all your family members, friends, as well as all sentient beings leaving none aside. Imagine that they are surrounding you and here you are leading them in this practice and looking at them with unconditional love and kindness. And the third point, what is the purpose of our practice? The purpose is to remove, to manifest the Buddha nature, the seed of perfection inside us by removing all our mental obscurations in the form of the gross mental obscurations called afflictive obscurations and the subtle ones, the cognitive obscurations. The gross afflictive obscurations consist of the contaminated karmas, the afflictions and the active seeds of the two. And the subtle cognitive obscurations, the smell like latencies of the afflictive obscurations. With this motivation, we start reciting from page three of the book, The Blaze of Non-Dual Bodhicittas, page three. So in the middle, and through by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. And through by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. And through by great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Independent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence. No coming, no going, no separateness and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme amongst all teachers, the one who taught this peace, which is freed of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers, the bodhisattvas and the Buddhas, who through the knowledge of all, these hearers seeking pacification to complete peace, who through the knowledge of paths causes those helping migrators to achieve the aims of the world, and who through the possession of omniscience helps the doers expound a variety of teachings. One who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings, the teacher, sugata, and protector, to you I make prostrations, 
the one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound, who eternally shines forth the forever noble light rays, to you, the Buddha, I make prostrations. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. For those of us who are new, uh, at first there is the dependent origination Harani in Sanskrit. This we will recite in tune three times. If you are new, you can just listen the first time and then follow. And then after that we will read the meaning of the mantra which is written just below. <coughs> Om ye dharma he tu prabhava he tum te shantatha gato bhyavada he shantayo nirodha he vangvadi mahashamanaye Swaha Om Ye Dharma He Tu Prabhava He Tum Te Shanta Thagato Hyavada He Shanta Yodhirodha Evam Vadi Mahashramana Swaha Om Ye Dharma He Tu Prabhava He Tum Tesham Tathagato Hyavada Tesham Chayo Nirodha Evam Vadi Mahashamana Esvaha All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the causes as well is taught by the great seer. Profound, peaceful, elaboration free, clear light and non-composite, such is the nectar like dharma I have discovered. Finding no one to fathom this teaching, in silence I will retire into the woods. Beyond utterance, thought and expression is the perfection of wisdom, which is unborn, unceased and has the nature of space. It is the object of apprehension of self-realized wisdom. To you, the mother of the Buddhas of the three kinds, I pay obeisance. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma, likewise the Guru is the Sangha. The Guru is the source of everything wholesome. I go for refuge in the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, please liberate all beings of miseries. I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expanse of billions of beings. The Buddha does not wash the negativities of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of suchness that beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine the light of Dharma for all bewildered in misery's gloom. The instructions on parting from the four attachments. 
If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If you are attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If you are attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. Page 14, Praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugatan, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When all supreme amongst humans, you were born on this earth, you faced out seven strides, then said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise then, I prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, with motion like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme sign's face like a spotless moon, clear like gold, to you I prostrate. Thus three like you, the three worlds are not, incomparable wise one, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you the Tathagat, I prostrate. The purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one path, the sublime pure reality, to the Dharma that pacifies, I prostrate. Those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the Sangha, I prostrate. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind thoroughly, this is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual aberration, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew, or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. To these merits, may sentient beings attain the rank of all sea, subdue the four faults, and be delivered from samsara's ocean, perturbed by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. Let me turn to page. 31. On page 31, in the middle, you can see there is the Heart Sutra Mantra, which reads that how Om Gati Gati Kara Gati Kara Sam Gati Gati Swaha. So the literal uh, translation is here is thus Go, go, go beyond, go still beyond, and establish yourself in your full enlightenment. We'll, uh, we'll recite this verse seven times, and again for the ones who are new, you can slowly join us. <laughs> Om Gati Gati 
पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाहा तथा ओंगते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाहा ते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाहा तथागते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाहा नेक्स्ट पेज पेज थर्टी टू द एट वर्सेस ऑफ माइंड ट्रेनिंग जस्ट अ नोट हियर दैट एवरी टाइम इट सेस दैट यू नो मैं आई पुट माय सेल्फ लोअर देन अदर्स इट्स नॉट मेंट टू Uh, put our self confidence down so kishan always says that we need to distinguish between our self confidence and our self referential ego so in this entire text whenever it's asking you to put yourself down it's actually asking us to put our self referential ego down while maintaining our self confidence so we read together the eight verses of my dream with the determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings which surpasses even the wishful for the gem may i hold them dear at all times whenever i interact with someone may i view myself as the lowest among all and from the very depths of my heart respectfully hold others as superior in all my deeds may i probe into my mind and as soon as mental and emotional afflictions arise as they endanger myself and others may i strongly confront them and avert them when i see beings of unpleasant character oppressed by strong negativity and suffering may i hold them dear for they are rare to find as if i have discovered a jewel treasure when others out of jealousy treat me wrongly with abuse slander and scorn may i take upon myself the defeat and offer to others the victory someone who i have helped or in whom i have placed great hopes mistreats me in extremely hurtful ways may i regard him still as my precious teacher in brief may i always <coughs> benefit and joy to all my mothers both directly and indirectly may i quietly take upon myself all hurts and pains of my mothers may all this remain undefiled by the stains of the eight hundred concerns and may i recognize in all things as illusions devoid of clinging be released from bondage from my two collections vast of space that i have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time May I become the chief living Buddha for all those whose minds are stemized blinded by ignorance. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Today, today the topic that we are going to study is the four noble truths. <clears throat> four noble truths, and of course, it's going to not going to be in great detail. More simple, comprehensive. Uh, what we need to keep in mind is that uh, they say 2,500 years ago. So we all know that Prince Siddharth, Prince Siddharth, um, his the journey of his life, Prince Siddharth, who later became uh, the the Buddha, the full awakened one. This Prince Siddharth. If you look at his biography, his journey of his life, um, we see that although he was a prince, um, 
the journey of life, what he went through, and what we are going through, we can see that there are great parallels. There are great parallels in terms of the, the journey of the, the, the same of the two beings, the Prince Adam and us. So the difference between him as young prince and us, you may think that oh he's a Buddha, but if you look at his biography, we see that one thing which is different between two of us, him as young prince and us as who we are now, the difference, this the difference which we are going to unfold now. So this unfolding of the difference between two of us, this will be a great factor for encouragement, inspiration, for us to seek a greater meaning of life. So finally, the point is they you see that there are many of the youngsters here. And the youngsters, most of you are going to universities, colleges, and so forth. And uh, say you have your own aspirations in this life, or should we do around this? And then some of you are in your jobs, very early stage of your job, the first phase of your life, in job, in career. Okay. So the so there we see that this young prince, as a prince who had everything which we are aspiring, what we are aspiring for, what we look up to. He had everything, and yet he left the palace. He left this luxurious palace life. Why? Okay, so if you read the biography of the Buddha, we see that he met with the, the four scenarios. Okay, this is very simplistic, very simplistic. We go back in time, 2,500 years ago, go back in time and imagine that you were just saying the, this young prince Siddharth, his sister or his brother, imagine. And then see you are like the third person observing what he was doing, what he was going through, the life. It was not as simple as the biography today that the, the, which we read, that he met with the, say, the sight of a sickness old age, death, and the ascetic is not as simple as this story. He was such a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, the, the young child, very brilliant. Number two, he was exceptionally compassionate. These two things are the unique features of this young prince, which means that we, for example, most of you I could see that you are in your 20s. On the, the, the 20s, say in 20s, you already been through the life challenges, difficulties. You could see the prospect of the, the problems, challenges of life and so forth. And so much of apprehension is there. So what will my life, where will, where will I be, say, the, where am I heading towards, right? So you already have these experiences. It's not just three, sim four simple sights, right? So this young prince, and he left only at the age of 29, not at the age of 21, 22, how old you are? 22. 22. How old 26. 26, right? He left at 29, not 26. You're getting it? So therefore, the point is that Somebody who's so brilliant, intelligent, compassionate with all this luxurious life, he left at the age of 29. At the age of 29, he got the conviction about the reality of life and to seek a greater meaning of one's life. You're getting it? All of us, all of us, whether you're Buddhists, Christians, Hindus, Muslims, Jains, non believers, it doesn't matter. We are all seeking a greater meaning of life. We, we may not be able to articulate what we are seeking, but we are seeking something. We are seeking a greater meaning of life. And oftentimes, oftentimes, there are two things. What you are actually seeking is a greater meaning of life, and your family members and people around, 
they are also seeking greater meaning for you, for your life. But they will guide you according to what they think is good for you. And unfortunately, most of the people around us, what they think is good for you is not really good for you. You're getting it? So they think that if you do something a little different out of box, if you do something little different out of box, they think that you're going off the track, right? They're scared, out of love and affection towards you. They want you to fall into the current, fall into the stream, the current, very forceful current of this society. And where is this current taking us? You don't have to you don't have to look far away. Right? Look at the people around you who are already who are already who are already 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Look at these people. And who are really happy? How many of them are really happy? How many of them say, I'm so happy now I've already reached 80 years old, I'm already 90 years old, I have lived my life, amazing. Now today, out of all the 80 years that I lived, today is the happiest moment. Just see how many of them are saying this. People in your family who are directing you in a particular say, you have, you have to do this, you have to do that, like this. And those who already reached 80, Tell them, who, who tells you that? Yes, you go like this, look at me, right? I'm so happy now, I'm the happiest today. No, you will sit with them, listen to their stories. They have only very sad things to tell you. And this is what they are. They don't intentionally want these bad things on you, but how they are driving you into is they are actually taking you into these pains. You're getting it? So this is where the Buddha Shakyamuni thought out of box. This young boy, young prince, thought out of box that how the people around me who are guiding me, how they are guiding me, actually if I look at them, their life stories, we see that it's full of pains. How they are directing me is only bringing me towards more pains. This is not what I'm intending. This is not my goal. This is not the purpose of my taking birth. Right? There must be greater meaning. We have this incredibly precious thinking faculty. The faculty to think so productively, so powerfully. Right? And yet, how the people who are guiding me, the elders who are guiding me, right? So, according to them, I am not using my potential fully. So then he realized that there's a greater meaning then the meaning that his elders are indicating to, the, to him, this great meaning of life. Okay, so with this, he went in search of a greater meaning of the life, and then for the six years of, let's say, the strenuous and very hard working, and with the practice, and finally he found the path, the greatest meaning, he discovered that, and he became what is known as the Sugata, the one who has gone. To, to the ultimate bliss, ultimate happiness, final purity of the, the, the mind. He discovered that. He reached that level. Okay, so after reaching that level, then the, he started to share his experience. He started to share his experience. His experience. And he you know, started to go to hell the banks. How the hell the banks? Help the beings. How to help the beings? So help the beings by performing miracles, by giving money, by giving resources like this. Okay, giving resources is just a temporary help. And often, even today, in a very secular world, people speak about don't give food. Give the skill to acquire food. If you give food, it's just one day. If you give skill, to look for food, you're giving food for the whole life. You're getting it? Don't give food, give the skill to acquire food. Likewise, say the say performing miracle, giving food and so forth, this is just temporary solution. What's the final solution? The problems are all dictated by the mind, mental. So our mind must grow, our mind must be matured. And deep inside, each one of us, deep inside, 
However dirty the water is, however dirty the water is, you take the, take the water from, say, what? The Yamuna? Was that a water like clean? Drinkable? No idea? Hey, the boys? What's the water like? You, huh? Not drinkable. It's not drinkable, right? Okay. However dirty this Yamuna water is, if you subject this water to the process purification, like ultrafiltration, reverse osmosis, these, the, through these processes, you purify it, it becomes this clean. All the water that you get from the, the, the market, from the shops, they are the purified version of the water. So this pure water came from where? From nowhere, right within the dirty water, the pure water existed. It was not visible because the purity inside is stopped, is not obscured by the dirt. But the dirt, remove the dirt, the purity will come out. You don't do anything. Just remove the dirt, purity inside will come out from the, by itself. Likewise, our mind, however dirty, however defiled our mind is, the true nature of mind is so pure. Each one of us, it's not that this Prince Siddharth is very special. It's not that his holiness the Dalai Lama he was very special. Each one of us, we all have the same purity inside. Only thing is that that purity, which is known as the Tathagata Garbha, this purity, which is known as the Tathagata Garbha, which is also known as the Buddha nature, which is also known as the treasure of the ultimate happiness that exists within each one of us. Whether you're educated, not educated, whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you are old, young, whether you are from India or from elsewhere, we all have this same potential, the perfect seed of purity is within you. The gold mixed with the soil. Gold by nature is to glow, but when mixed with the soil, it doesn't glow. You don't even feel the presence of gold there. You may dump this, thinking that this is just with the garbage, but the gold experts can see gold in the air. And the gold experts will tell us that there's gold there. And how do they convince us? By removing the dirt. Gradually remove the dirt. dirt. As the dirt is removed more and more, then the gold inside will start to glow. The moment you start seeing the glow, little glow there, from there you could infer that there's gold inside. Right? So this is exactly what is, what is with each one of us. This is our reality. So now this Prince Siddharth, Prince Siddharth, having discovered the presence of such a wealth of purity, such a wealth of happiness inside, yet obscured by the dirt of the mind, he went in, in, went in search of a path to remove all the dirt. Finally, he succeeded. Then under the Bodhi tree, he became what is known as full enlightened one, where all the metal defilements are going to return, and this perfect seed of pure purity, the Buddha nature, becomes vibrant. Okay, so he came to be referred, revered as the fully awakened one, the Buddha. Okay, now what did he do? After being enlightened, so that he needed to teach us. We also have this same nature, same purity inside us. So he is so compassionate, wanted to teach us how to get rid of the metal defilements from our mind. And this purity within, that treasure happens within, comes out for each one of us. So for that matter, he started to give teachings. And all his teachings, somehow we can see them compromised, all encapsulated within what is known as the three turnings of the wheel of dharma. Three turnings of the wheel of dharma. All his teachings somehow can be encapsulated or subsumed under these three things known as the three turnings of the will of dharma. Okay, the first turning of the will of dharma happened in happened in Varanasi, Sarna, Varanasi. And second turn of will of dharma happened in Rajgir, Rajgir. And the third turn of will of dharma happened in Vaishali. Okay, so these are the two places. The first turn of will of dharma happened in Varanasi or Sarnath, 
And second Chaturbhuja of Dhamma happened in Rajgir. Third Chaturbhuja of Dhamma happened in Vaishali. Okay, this is very important. Now, interestingly, okay, tell me, how many of you in your life you had a very, very scary dreams? Raise hands. How many of you in your life you had very scary dreams? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Almost all. Okay, unfortunate. Okay, we all had these scary dreams. Okay, now tell me, how many of you had in your life, how many of you had very pleasant dreams? At least once in your life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, almost all, right? All of them. So we all had very scary dreams, unpleasant dreams. We all had very pleasant dreams. Right? Okay. And how many of you in your life, once in a once in lifetime, you have woken up from the dreams? All of us, right? All of us. If you don't have, if you don't, the raise hands. Okay, which means that. Okay, so we all have that experience. So there are three phases. One is unpleasant dreams. Number two is the pleasant dreams. Number three, waking up. You're getting it? Waking up. So which is the best? Tell me. Waking up is the best, right? Waking up is the best. Waking up is the best pertaining to the bad dreams. You're getting it? Waking up is also trouble. It's a problem, <laughs> right? Okay, waking up, why waking up can be troublesome, can be problematic, is that waking up is also another dream. You're getting it? Waking up is also another dream. What conventionally we call is waking up. Conventionally, we call this wake up is also a dream. So you are, you are actually not working up fully, right? So now, if you, what you, okay, just raise your hand. Somebody tell me, what do you, what you say? What is that thing which you don't want in your life? Anybody raise your hands. What is that thing which you don't want in your life? Just raise your speak your mind. Bring the young ones. Everyone, anyone. Quick, quick, what is one thing, if there is one thing that you want to really say no, what is that thing? Tell me, yes? Pain. Pain. Anyone? Fear. Fear. Anyone else? Misery. Misery. is very good. All three answers are coming from very young ones, yes? Death. Death. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, so we see that pain, misery, fear, death, you're getting it? So these are all something, is this something confined to you or to all, to all, whether you're a believer or not, whether you're Buddhists or Christians or Hindus, Muslims, Jains, the Jews, the, say, the Sikhs or the non-believers, everyone, nobody wants the fear, death, anxiety, stress, miseries and so forth. You're getting it? This is one thing that we don't want. The true nature of mind, this the pains that we're going through, these are not these are not your true nature. These are the form of your dreams. If there is a dream, how to get rid of this pain? Tell me. Wake up. You're getting it? Wake up. This is so important. So important. Okay. With this in mind, to wake up, some people when you say somebody's in deep sleep and then you shake the person so strongly what happens the person may have some kind of a shock you're getting it wake if you're the mother and a child if you want to wake up you wake up the child how do you wake up gently or forcefully first gently, first, gently. you're getting it okay start very gently you're getting it why do you do it very quickly huh he or she might get a shock you're getting it did you have that experience? Yes. Somebody should be like this. <laughs> yeah, okay. So wake the person up gently. You're getting it. This is so important. So important. Now, the Buddha Shakyamuni, how many, how many turns of the Dharma the Buddha made? Three. three. So these three are very gentle way of waking us up from the sleep of ignorance. Very gentle way. The first one, the first one, Buddha Dharma, so gentle. 
So they are the both the charge, the four noble truths. The four noble truths, right? Four noble truths. And the first one was very gentle, right? And then if you still are not woken up, then more strong. Second Milo Dharma is quite shocking. Right? First one is very gentle, but the Buddha said that, okay, tell me. Tell me, say in your dream, anybody who had a dream of a ghost chasing you, of or of a nightmare, nightmare that you had a nightmare of robot chasing you, ghost chasing you, wild animals chasing you, or you're falling, right? Okay, how many you dreamt of having fallen from a cliff? Okay, then uh, about to bang against the, the floor, then you start flying. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, so say, say you're falling, right? And then you flew. Wow, I'm lucky that I did not bang against the, the ground. Okay, again you <laughs> fall. Right. Okay. So the say you say you're falling is very scary, night, very nightmarish. And then instead of banging against them, and suddenly you start flying, it's a relief. It's a relief. Again, the ghost is chasing you. Right. Somebody's chasing you. Again, it's pain. So pain, relief, pain, relief. Okay. So we see that in this dream, there's a pain, relief, pain, relief happening. Concurrently, the pain, relief, pain, relief happening. Tell me. I'll give you two scenarios and you decide. So pain, relief, relief is very nice. And again, followed by pain, again, relief, pain, relief. This scenario. And the one pain, this pain, even one pain is good enough. Right? For example, really goes chasing you, goes about to grab at you, or the tiger really the say the uh, the getting you in his claws okay so there the pain is acutely acute excruciating painful right so much of fears a great 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 nightmarish okay when you have that experience the earlier happiness pleasures in the dream is just total hollow shallow meaningless you agree with me right? one moment of that fear is good enough to simply nullify all the past experiences of happiness okay never mind next next moment again you're freed right again you're freed you're happy okay this one scenario and another scenario is wake up which is better huh first one happiness then so followed by so much acute, excruciating pain, again followed by happiness, right? All these happen moments of happiness, they are nothing but short respite. Short respite, a temporary relief, right? That one, you prefer that, or you prefer the waking up so that you don't, you don't, you just forget about all the, the fears and the pains of the dream. Which do you prefer, tell me? Waking up. You're getting it? Waking up. No, why? So in the dream, you can have, you know, you can have a very pleasant dream also. It's not always that marriage. Pleasant dream. Why don't you go prefer the, the dream? Why don't you? Huh? Hey, this is not philosophy, right? Just tell me. Give me an answer. Anybody can give the answer. Why don't you prefer that dream? You can have a dream which is so pleasant sometimes. Not always bad dreams. Pleasant dreams also there. Why don't you? You know, continue with the dream. Why do you prefer to continue with the dream rather than waking up? Why? Anyone? Illusory. Huh? Illusory. illusory. What is illusory? So, even if it's illusory, it's still fine. You can live in this illusory world. What's the problem? Anyone? Why? Yes. <laughs> they, again, you can go back to the same point, the pain. Happiness is just a respite. It's not a permanent happiness. In the dream, you have a happiness, right? Okay, well, how many of you like to have the good dream? Raise your hands. How many of you like to have the bad dream? Raise your hands. Pujala, you want the bad dreams? 
Okay, okay. So how many like have good dreams? Raise hands. Okay, good. Now tell me how many you like. How many you will have the good dream tonight? Raise hands. How many you will have good dreams tonight? Huh? Raise hands. Why not? You said that you all like to have good dreams. Why not? Do you have good dreams tonight? Why not? Why not? Huh? Not good. Huh? You don't have the control. You cannot decide. You can again. You cannot decide the dream. Even though the dream can be a very pleasant dream, but the one weakness of the dream, the drawback of the dream, is that you don't have the control of the dream. The dream is not in your. You cannot decide. You're getting it. If you cannot decide, you don't have the freedom to choose the dream. You're getting it. If you don't have the freedom to choose the dream. You're going through the loss of freedom. Loss of freedom is the greatest misery. Even though the even though the dream is very pleasant, but you don't have the freedom to choose that dream. That's a loss of freedom. Loss of freedom is the greatest misery. Don't forget it. Loss of freedom is the greatest misery. Okay. So for that matter, we see the need for us to wake us from the sleep dream. Okay. So say you dream of say say you dream of the ghost chasing you. Okay, by the way, raise hands those of you who dreamt of literally who dreamt of uh, say a ghost chasing you. One, two, three, four, and myself five. Okay, how many dreamt of uh, say a very scary dream? Other scary dreams? Raise your hands. Other scary dreams? Okay. Something which is not a ghost. Okay, tell me what kind of scary dreams can you give me? Share with me. What kind of scary dreams? Yes. Okay, meeting with accident. Meeting with accident, yes. Any other dream? Scary dreams? Anyone? Being in the middle of a genocide situation. Being in the middle of a genocide situation. That's very true. Yes. Any other? Yes, Pinzola? Here, here. Someone chasing me to kill me. Okay, somebody literally chasing you in the dream. He's chasing you to kill you. Okay. So, look, say, and then say somebody is really, you know, with a knife, you know, coming to kill you. Then you are running, running, running. Okay. And then in the dream, when you run, oftentimes you fall. Right? You fall. When you fall, it's so difficult to get up. Yes. So difficult to get up. And the person is about to get you. What's your feeling? Now I'm done. Finish. You scream. Right? Okay. When you scream, then your mother wakes you up. What's your feeling? Relief. Tremendous relief. You're getting it? This is very important now. At this point, tell me, why were you screaming in the dream? Why you stop screaming when your mother wakes you up? Why? Tell me very quick. Why were you screaming in the dream? Okay, because in the while we were dreaming, we thought the dream was real. You're getting it? Okay. Okay. While in the dream, we thought the dream was real. That the person was coming to kill me was real. Is this ignorance or this wisdom? Ignorance. ignorance. You're getting it? With the ignorance, the effect is miseries. With the ignorance, the effect, the effect, the result, the resultant state is fear. Okay. When you wake up. When you wake up, your mother wakes you up, right? You, you stop screaming. You get such a relief. Okay, why do you get a relief? Why do you get a relief, anyone? Why do you get the relief? Anyone? Yes, Hatunda? I was relieved that it was just a dream. I was relieved because that we had, it was just a dream, meaning that it was not real, it was dream. So seeing the dream as dream, is that wisdom or this ignorance? Wisdom. wisdom. So the, with the wisdom, the outcome is relief. 
But the ignorance, the outcome is fear. You're getting it? This we have to know. This we have to know. So all the fear, all the fears, the ground is ignorance. All the relief from the fears, the ground is wisdom. Don't forget it. And our mind has both the capacities to create ignorance, to create wisdom. We, this mind has both the capacities. Yet, of the two capacities, to give rise to ignorance and to give rise to wisdom, to give rise to wisdom is very stable, is the true nature. The true nature of mind has the, the capacity to give rise to wisdom. The true nature of mind does not have the capacity to give rise to ignorance. So that ignorance is very shallow. It does not have a sound ground. Wisdom, the ground is very firm. You cultivate the wisdom, the ground is very firm. Ignorance, ground is not firm because this is not your true nature. Your true nature is full of wisdom. Only thing is that it is mixed with the soil. That soil stops the, the, the wisdom. So when the light is stopped, what will you see? Darkness. When the light is stopped, Right? Say there's a light, very bright, bright light there, you cover it with a picture. What comes out? Darkness comes out. Darkness is ignorance. When the wisdom is blocked, ignorance is manifested. Right? But the wisdom is inside this picture. You're getting it? We all have this wisdom inside. It's only blocked by the mental defilements. That has to come out. Okay. For that matter, how to come out is wake up. Wake up to for you to get this wisdom. So to, to, to see that the dream is not real. You're getting it? That is wisdom. Sorry, it's not real means the dream is dream. That's the wisdom. To see the dream as real, that is ignorance. Okay, now are you, are you dreaming or you are in a waking state? We're in the waking state. You're getting it? We're in the waking state. But you are, we are all in another dream. Dream, there are two kinds, don't forget it. One is a conventional dream, right? Which Pinsola woke up from somebody coming to, to chase and to kill him, right? From that dream, he came out. That dream is conventional dream, you're getting it? That dream is conventional dream. From the conventional dream, we, we you know, come out of that almost every day. Almost every day, within 24 hours, we have this short conventional dream, we come out again, go back to dream, again come out. But what we are going through now is the unconventional dream. This unconventional dream, we never woke up, unfortunately. We never woke up from this unconventional dream since time immemorial till today. You're getting it? We never woken up. The moment we are woken up, all our fears that we are going through now in our life, they will all go away because this we see what we see, what we are seeing now is so real. Okay, you look at the prayer flex there. Just quickly look at the prayer flex on the ceiling. Okay, right. Okay, tell me. Okay, now quickly look at the person sitting next to you. If, if possible, the person sitting just next to you. Don't look at the person far away. Okay, most of you are smiling. I, I did not ask you to smile. You're smiling. Why did you smile? Huh? You're smiling because you see something there. You're getting it? You see, you see that like a dream? Or you see that that is real? How did you see that? That makes you smile? It's so real. You're getting it? That is ignorance. In actuality, even that is another form of dream. Which is which dream? Conventional or unconventional? Unconventional dream. You're getting it? So now, say the real meaning of wise wisdom, the real meaning of wise person, wisdom, is somebody who is putting effort to wake up from the unconventional dream that is the wisest person anybody who puts effort to wake up wake up from the unconventional dream is known as the wise person anybody who stays inside this 
unconventional dream, who doesn't want to come out of this dream, that is an unwise person. You're getting it? Okay. In a dream, in a dream, right? This person was chasing Pizola, this person was chasing you with the knife to kill you. Okay. So in the dream, suddenly if your father and all your relatives, they come, you know, they come, they suddenly they, they show up from the other side. Are you relieved or not in the dream? You're very relieved. And they are prepared not only with the, the, the knives, but they are prepared well armored, right? Well armored with the machine guns and these things. And you're the, the, the person who came, the, your enemy coming to kill you, runs away. You're happy, not happy? Very happy. You're getting it? Very happy. Okay, then what will you do? You will make complaints to your father. Oh, this game, this person really, you know, frightened me. With it. You make complaints. You get it? When you wake up, will you make the complaint or not? No. When you wake up, Pinsola, will you make complaint? Mm -hmm. You will not complain. Why? You know that even that person who came to kill me was just my dream. You're getting it? It's not real. So all the problems that are going through in our life, in actuality, they're nothing but the a form of a dream, unconventional dream. You're getting it? So within the dream, unnecessarily we create complications. Within the dreams. You're getting it? Okay. So let's say that how many okay, anybody who, who watched a movie in a movie theater um, at a young age, when you were 10 years old, isn't when you're 10 years old, you watch a movie in a movie theater. Okay. When you are 8 years old, you watch a movie in a movie theater. Only one. Two. Okay. When you're 5 years old, watch a movie in a movie theater. Okay, one over there, right? Okay. Tell me. Say when you say the, the year, whatever age, the youngest age you could remember that you watch a movie in the movie theater, that age, say, the movie happened to be a very scary movie. How you felt so scared in the, while you were watching a movie, when you were young? One, two, three, anyone else? Four? Okay, almost we all. In fact, I remember myself, I must be age, I think, uh, seven or eight, maybe. And we were watching a, the movie in school. That's cool. In the hall, school hall, the big on the big screen, and the movie was actually a cartoon. No, it was just a cartoon movie, cartoon movie. And then the, the, the there's one person who was you know with the, the hero, the hero was with the spear chasing the chasing some kind of white thing. There was supposed to be a ghost. It's very, very scary. It's when the, the very scary part was short, I just you know, well, I hit myself. Right? It was so scary. So why? Because I thought it was real. Way, way. I thought something was real way on the screen. Yes? Okay. So I thought the movie was real. Okay, this movie, was it coming from the screen or coming from the coming from the projector? Huh? Where's the projector? Behind, not here. You're getting it? Movie is not coming from the screen. It's on the screen, not from the screen. The movie is not on the screen. Movie is on the screen, but not from the screen. It's from where? From the projector. You're getting it? Okay. Likewise, everything now. Actually, we are well, like we're watching a movie. Everything that you're seeing, that you're hearing, the traffic sound that you're hearing, they're all there, but they're coming from your projector of your mind, right? Project your mind is like the projector. Yet when you're watching the movie, you are so scared. Are you aware that this comes from the projector or you thought it's really there? It's really there. That is ignorance. That is ignorance. The moment you realize it's not really there, it's coming from the projector, your fear will dissolve. You're getting it? So therefore, it's very important for us to know the reality that everything is nothing but coming from my own mind. You're getting it? Okay, with this, the same to come to know that what I'm seeing is like is like a dream. That we have to discover. That we have to discover. To discover, don't go for blind faith. 
Don't go for blind faith. Right? There's no room for blind faith. With a blind faith, you will never discover this reality. Tell me, say, how many of you know E equals mc square? How, how many of you heard about this equation? E equals mc square. All of us in school, E equals mc square. What is this equation? Albert Einstein's equation, right? Albert Einstein's equation. And imagine that even if you even if you put the big picture of Albert Einstein and, and pray to him, please, please let me experience what E will see, what how E will sense square, you recite Albert Einstein, Om Ahum, Albert Einstein, Om Ahum, recite this mantra, Om Ahum, Om Albert Einstein, Om Om Albert Einstein, Om, you recite hundred thousand times and pray, 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 offer the, the what? The, the, okay, I'll not use the word arti. <laughs> say the say the say the flower. Hundred thousand times you offer, you will never. Can you can you imagine that one day suddenly you will know how e equals mc square the derivation hold the process of derivation you can realize. Can you imagine that? It will never happen. Don't expect that. You're getting it. So therefore, this expectation is known as a blind faith. There's no room for blind faith in the teaching of the Buddha. So finally, the point is that if you want to know how E equals MC square, rather than offering flowers or um, um, saying this, you do the derivation. <laughs> go to Albert Einstein, go to a physics teacher and teach, please teach me how E equals MC square. You start doing all the derivation. What is E? E is energy. Right? What is M? Mass. What is C? The constant, speed of light. And then square, right? You learn all these things, and then you start doing the derivation. After several times of derivation, within the same day, you will know how this equal sense square comes into being. The derivative you will know this. You're getting it? This is where this all through rational, this all through logical thinking, rational thinking, realistic thinking, that you come to realize the, the knowledge, awakening from the sleep of ignorance from the, this conventional dream and the unconventional dream. It happens only through rational thinking. So therefore the Buddha said that bhikshus and wise people, just as the goldsmith tests the purity of the gold by cutting, rubbing and burning the gold, you should also examine and you should also examine my teachings and put them into practice, not simply because you respect me. You're getting it? So in a way what the Buddha is saying is don't start with blind faith. Start with the rational thinking. Start logically. Start with the reasoning. This is so important. So with this mind, with this mind, we have to finally, the, the job is what? The wise. How to be wise? How to be wise is by going, a, going towards the direction of wake up from the sleep of ignorance. That is the real meaning of being wise. Go to us, go for a path to wake up, wake up from the sleep of ignorance. Okay. Now, to wake up from the sleep of ignorance, what do you mean by the ignorance, sleep of ignorance? Sleep of ignorance is where you see the dreamlike nature as real. You're getting it? Dreamlike nature is real. Okay, tell me. So this dream, where the person is coming to stab you, this dream, this person coming to stab you, is this, uh, okay, the, the movie that you're watching, is that coming from the screen or coming from the projector? From the projector. So the screen is the object and the projector is the subject. For example, same, you see this flower. Is there a flower? What is this flower? What's the color of this flower? Red flower. Okay, this flower is your object. And what's the subject? The mind. Your mind is the subject. This flower is the object, your mind is the subject. Likewise, the movie is the object, and the movie projector is the subject. the subject. You're getting it? So, this flower, okay, let's say the movie. The movie is coming from the object or coming from the subject? From the subject. Coming from the subject. subject. Which subject? The movie projector. You're getting it? Likewise, the dream. The dream person who is chasing who is who is chasing you. This this person, when you wake up, 
you will realize that this person who was chasing you was coming from the object or coming from your subject? Coming from the subject. Okay, now we're going to the technicalities. Little technicality. When you see that the dream person was chasing you, when you see that this dream person coming to uh, be, coming to kill you, this person was coming from the subject. Coming from the subject means subjectively real. Right? Coming from the subject, you are free from the fear. When you see the dream person coming to kill you as from the object, from the object means objectively real, the fear arises. You are getting it? Seeing this dream goes as objectively real, fear arises or the, 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 the relief arises. Fear arises. Seeing the dream goes as coming from the subject is subjectively real, not objectively real. Subjectively real, the fear arises or fear dissolves. Fear dissolves. Okay, now what we have to say is that after coming from after going going away from this class, then if somebody asks, what did you learn? What you have to say is that I learned subjective existence versus objective existence, and everything is like a dream. In a way that everything is subjectively real or objectively real, subjective. everything is subjectively real. And the person may ask you, "Oh, everything is like it too. Everything is subjectively real, right?" Okay, how do you know that is everything subject subjectively real? What is your answer? Hey, somebody tells you, "What did you learn from Tibet House Friday class?" What do you say? I learned that there's something known as objective existence and subjective, subjective existence. And which is true? What is the answer? Yes. That everything is subject to real. Amazing! How can I know this? Huh? How can I know this? <laughs> okay. How, how can I know this? <laughs> Come to develop. Okay. So for that, you have to study more extensively. How? Right? Okay. No, you have to believe in it. No, this is not the answer. You have to believe in no things are subject to real. Things are subject to real, right? No, this doesn't help. How? How is it subject to real? That we have to learn. You're getting it? So for that, okay, now look at the other person sitting next to you again. Again, you're smiling. Okay, now now the different thing today, now at this moment, is just tell me how did that person who made you smile? How did this person appear to you? This person appeared to you objectively real or subjectively real? How did the person appear to you? Objectively huh? real. Objectively real. Objectively real. You're getting it? Objectively real. Do you see that person as like your mind is like a projector? Your mind is making this person? Or no, no, no. So independently there from the object. How did the other person appear to you? Like a projector? Project Projection from the projector or independently there, independent of my mind. How does the other person appear to you? Independently there, independent of my mind. That is known as we perceive things as objectively real. In actuality, everything is like a dream. In what way is like a dream? Just as the dream is subjectively real, everything is subjectively real. You're getting it? If the person that makes you a smile also exists subjectively. Okay. But that's quite shocking, right? Okay, that's quite shocking. Okay, if the person that I'm seeing is, is also coming from a mind, from the subject, how can I know this? It's quite scary, right? Okay, so this we have to discover. So there's a radical shift happening in your perception. Radical shift from seeing things to object real to the subject real. That is a radical shift. For this, because there's a radical shift, it's not going to be easy task. You're getting it? Okay. Just to give you, say, the idea, just you give me the answer, whether you agree with me or not, right? I'm, const I'm constantly going to give you questions. And you say, yes, no, yes, no. Okay. My question to you, that the person, the person who made you smile, which part of the person made you smile? The face? Yes, no. Yes. So this face is nothing but made of a thin skin. You agree with me? Behind the thin skin, there are fatty tissues. Yes, no. If you see the fatty tissues, you will not smile. Right? It's very scary. Right? 
Okay, behind that, then the bones, right? How many have seen the human bones? Okay, we have seen that. How is that? It doesn't make you smile? No? That is exactly the air, right? The person who was sitting within you, other person, is actually the air, right? We should not really make you smile in the, in the night if that, you know, the, the, the skeleton comes, with that bone comes, you will not smile, you will run away, right? Okay, so this is actually the air, okay, but don't be afraid, this, this reality is there, but, but even these constituencies, even these constituencies, they are also made of, they are also made of cells, billions of cells, you agree with me or not? Yes. Thin skin, the fatty tissues, the bone inside, they are nothing but a million of cells. You agree with me? Okay. And these cells are made of, these cells are made of, these cells are made of molecules. You agree with me? And these molecules are made of atoms. You agree with me? And these atoms are made of electrons, protons, neutrons. You agree with me? Good. Stay there. Now, actually the person, yeah, now look at the other person. Look at the other person now. That person that you are seeing is actually nothing but made of millions and billions of electrons, protons and neutrons. Right? Imagine that you are looking at the other person through the electron microscope to see the, the reality. Electrons, protons, neutrons. If you, if you start seeing the electrons, protons, neutrons, will you smile? Are you scared? You are not scared. When you see the skull, it makes you skeleton. It scares you. When you see something covered with the nice, you know, com the complexion like this, the, the thin skin, that makes you smile. When you see the form of the fatty tissues and the, the, the skeleton, it makes you, it gives you fear. When you see the same thing in electrons, protons, neutrons, attachment disappears, smile disappears, fear also disappears. You're getting it? Okay, so which of the three is reality? That makes you smile, that makes you the, the fear, that, that, that gives you neutral. Which of the three perceptions is correct? Huh? Huh? All three are correct. All three are correct. You're getting it? All three are correct. All three are correct. How can all three be correct? They give you different impacts in your, in your mind. One gives you smile, one gives you fear, one gives you a neutral feeling. How can the you know same person, how can you say the same flower is red as well as non-red? Okay, so that is important. So the thing is that this is just nothing, three different perceptions. You agree with me? Three different perceptions are taking place. Perception is a subject or the object? Subject. subject. You're getting it? Subject. So therefore. So therefore, at times, it will be good if you can, you know, say once in a while, think of the other person who creates problem on you, right? Think of the other person who makes you obsessed, right? Gives you a sense of obsession. Think of the same person in the form of obsession. It's also a pain. Obsession is also a pain. And then, being, you know, say the put off. Frightened is also a pain. Both are pains. In both cases, obsession you may not feel it is a pain. Actually, it's a great, great pain. Obsession itself, repercussions of the obsession is worst. It's a very gross pain. Repercussion, jealousy, all these things happen. So, so obsession itself is pain. How do you know that obsession is pain? Right? When I saw, when I'm so excited by the particular person, how is that a pain? Just to see that is very simple. Try to see the same person who made you feel obsessed. Same person, you see the person in the form of the, say the, say the thin skin, fatty tissues, skeleton, and then deeper than that, more subtle than that, go into the, the, the cells, molecules, atoms, stay near, spend a little time like this. And then when you get it, when you get it, then when the earlier perception dissolves, 
then you will feel the, the obsession dissolves. When the obsession dissolves, the mind, you will feel the lightness of your mind. Lightness of the mind, such a freedom, you will feel that freedom. You feel such a the turbulence of the mind stops. You can feel the serenity. You can feel the tranquility there. Right? This experience of tranquility we never experienced before. Just try this. And this is not the, the this is not the meditation on the ultimate emptiness. It's just uh, this say the, the scratch. Right? If you really experience the ultimate reality, it could is so revolutionary. It's extremely say the like a breakthrough in a perception, and then you'll give it a final ultimate joy, ultimate happiness. You will get the total freedom. Okay, so with this in mind, then the question is, wow, it's amazing. So what I see as the person so object real there, and then how I see in the form of atoms, these are very different. Reality that exists there, and how I see is very different. So therefore it's like a dream. Dream I see that is real, but reality is not being real, it's real. The dream not being real, it's a reality, right? The dream, is that real or not? Dream is not real. Dream not being real is the real, or the dream being real is real? Dream not being real is a reality, right? That is what we have to discover. Okay, so to discover that we have to wake up. To wake up, we have to wake up gradually. Don't wake up, you know, Abruptly. In the monasteries, in the big, big monastic universities, for example, like Ganden, Sera, Depong, in the big monastic universities, big, big, big monastic universities, when the, the monks, early morning, like say, the say 4.35, when the monks were being called for the group prayer, early mornings, say, the young monks, they were given the responsibility to call the monks to and for that matter how it is done that is done through you know the the hitting the gong and to hit the gong if you hit the gong very strongly right with the sound it's like somebody giving you a very strong jerk right and then you're shot okay so there many of the monks they were actually meditating so when you just Say either the same the say there are many ways of doing that. Young monks they will you know with the voice they will sing something. Also sing sing something, make a very long loud voice, very pleasant voice. So there with this it can disturb the meditation. For that matter, first the tradition is to use the rosary, rosary. And scratch the rosary along the, the roof, along the roof at the roof. There are the what the structures there along the structures. When it's pin drop silence there, right? When you scratch like this, the sound is so audible, so audible. When everything's so calm, no traffic, and everybody is sleeping, the sound is so audible. Likewise, so the rosary they are being you know, scratched along the, the structures on the roof. So with this very gentle sound, then the monks meditating there, okay, now it's time for me to go for the group prayer. Then they will prepare themselves. Okay, so the point is that we have to wake up gently. So the Buddha, with the three turnings of the of Dharma, the first one is very gentle, Nudge to you know wake us up. Okay, so for that matter, finally, uh, the what do you mean by waking up? Now, from what you learned thus far, what do you mean by waking up in a true sense, in a true meaning? What do you mean by waking up? To know that, to know that everything is like a dream. What do you mean by everything is like a dream? Everything is subject real, object real. That everything is subject real. When you say everything is subject real, nothing is objectively. objectively real. You're getting it? Nothing is a negative word. Nothing. Nothing is objective real. Nothing means empty. Everything is empty of objective reality. You're getting it? This is what we have to know. Okay. Now tell me. 
If you really want to get rid of all the fears of life, what should we do? You should wake up from the unconventional dream. What do you mean by waking up from the unconventional dream? To know everything as subjectively real. To know everything as subjectively real means to know everything is empty of objective real. Nothing is objectively real. You're getting at this word, you have to know. Now, Suddenly, if somebody says nothing is everything, nothing is object real, and the mobile that we have, some of you might have mobile, the iPhone X, your mobile is also like a dream. No, 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 the rise of the need may shock you. Right? Your mobile is like a dream, right? You have so much obsession. Okay, so then, so the Buddha said, first the Buddha said, everything exists truly. Buddha said, the first time you go to Dharma, the Buddha should give a little nudge. A little, little push, not too strong. So Buddha should not shock you. Huh? Everything is subject real. Nothing is subject real. Then will shock us. Okay. So the Buddha said that everything exists truly. Right? The world is nothing, but the world is the manifestation of the four noble truths, and all the four noble truths they exist truly. This is what the Buddha taught. You're getting it. Then the second turn of the of Dharma, the Buddha said, nothing exists truly. Everything is subject real. Nothing is object real. This is what the Buddha taught in the second turn of the of Dharma. Then, say, people who are you know, beginners, they are very happy with the first teaching. People who are exceptionally, exceptionally smart, they are very happy with the second teaching. Then the mediocre people, they get lost. The mediocre many average. Average people, first turn the Buddha said everything is just truly. Second turn the Buddha said nothing is just truly. Now, which is true now? So that good loss. Because they are lost, they say, what is it? Pramat Samudgupta, uh, Samudgata. Pramat Samudgata, this Bodhisattva. He, on behalf of all these people, all the people who are confused, people. So he stood up in Vaishali, he stood up and asked the Buddha, Buddha, the full awakened one, you in Sarna, you taught that four noble truths, everything exists truly. Then in Rajgir, the same awakened one, the Buddha, you taught that nothing exists truly, which is true. Then the Buddha interpreted, the Buddha interpreted to help the mediocre faculty people. He gave the third teaching. That is known as the third turning of the will of dharma. You getting it? Okay. So the what we are doing, going to do is the teaching on the four noble truths. The first turning will of dharma. First turn of dharma, will of dharma is what we're going to do. Okay. First, the four noble truths. Four noble truths, the okay. First we have to know what the four noble truths are. What the four noble truths are. Then I will take you a little into more, say the of the technical side. The four noble truths. Four noble truths. The first one is truth of suffering. Second one is truth of cause of suffering. Third one is truth of cessation of suffering. And fourth one is the path leading to the cessation of suffering. Okay, these four things we have to know. The first one is the truth of suffering. Number two is the truth of the cause of suffering. Number three is the truth of the cessation of suffering. And then number four is truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. Okay, these four things we should be we should have them on our fingertips. Okay, with this <clears throat> um okay, so before we go into the technicalities, I like to the same imagine that somebody is feeling unwell. Feeling unwell and uh, say that same that the person has say the constant fever, constant fever, loss of weight, loss of appetite and then say the okay the intermittent fever and that is has been going for last say the five days ten days what would be what would be your advice 
how do you help how do you help that person anyone hey maybe we never know it can be your sister it can be your brother it can be your father it can be your mother what advice would you give to see a doctor. Huh? yes to see a doctor right to see a doctor or some people they already have the first aid with them with the paracetamol they may give the paracetamol with the paracetamol the problem the, the fever the heading will be over for two hours three hours again you'll come back so the paracetamol does not work so what will you advise rest or huh? or you will take the person to a doctor which doctor good doctor or a medical doctor or a terrible doctor huh? To the best of your knowledge, the best doctor. To the best of your knowledge, the best doctor. You're getting it? Okay. So for that matter, um, the same, <clears throat> which is better? That, so here, before you take the person to the doctor, you don't know that a person is suffering from tuberculosis. Right? So which means this is like, ignorance is bliss. Okay, I'm just, I'm feeling a little tired, I need a little rest. With the doctor, you realize that it's tuberculosis. It's very severe, right? You don't want to hear that. Okay, which is better? To live in the ignorance bliss? Okay, a fever. Okay, I take paracetamol, it goes away for two hours. Then I don't want to eat food, my appetite loss. And my body is also becoming now weaker and weaker and weaker. Okay, but I, I, know, I don't really feel the pain as such. Okay, this is better? Or to realize that I'm, a tuber that I'm suffering from tuberculosis, which is better? To know that I'm suffering. Uh, tell me, hey. To know that I have a tuberculosis is much better. You're getting it? Okay, so therefore, the Buddha said, first you have to know the suffering. You have to know that you are suffering. If you don't know that you are suffering, you will never put effort to get out of the suffering. You have to know that you are suffering. You are getting it? Okay. Once you know that you are suffering, then what will you do? Then you will you will be, you should, will you show anger? I'm so bad. I'm for why other people are suffering. I'm only I'm suffering. Why other people do they don't have the the tuberculosis? Why do even the beggars? I'm eating the best of the food. I'm being very hygienic. When the beggar even the, the beggars does not have good food. Still the beggar is very healthy. Why this some God is unkind to me. Buddha is unkind to me. You can play like this. Or what will you do? Once you know that you are suffering tuberculosis, what will you do? Huh? What will you do? What will the doctors do? Doctors will diagnose exactly what kind of tuberculosis, whether, whether it's a pleurisis, the lung problem, or the tuberculosis or where. He will diagnose that very precisely. You're getting it? Okay. So the point is that once you know the suffering well, then you have to think of removing the suffering. How to remove the suffering? Hey, how to remove the suffering? Okay, I'll give you one example, right? And I want your advice. So you are uh, my advisor, right? Say, um, those people who already gave me the advice earlier don't give me the advice now, right? I want the adv new advisors. Okay, advice I'm seeking from you is that I live on the third floor. I live on the third floor in Delhi. Okay, and There's a problem in my house. Because the problem in my house, I have asthma problem. A very severe asthma problem. And what's the problem? What's the problem in the house? That the house is always damp. It's always damp. It's always wet. Right? And I have the asthma problem because of that. Okay, what advice would you give? Finally, I don't want the asthma problem. Okay, those who are more relatively coming new to the house, tell me what, what advice would you give? Oh, imagine that you are, I'm your brother, then you'll be more compassionate, you can give me advice, <laughs> right? If you see me as a stranger, you may not give me advice. Okay, your name? 
Okay, Janika wants me to change my house. She's so compassionate. She's my sister, right? She said, oh, brother, please change your house. Okay, good advice. One, any other advice? Any other advice? Hey, what advice would you give? Tabala, what advice would you give? Tabala, no stance, right? <laughs> okay, anyone else? What advice would you give? Okay, the uh, father in law? Oh, you know that? Okay. He, he's all the, all the previous advisor, right? I want new advisors. New advisors, what advice would you give? Pinsol, you already, you have my advice already, right? Okay, Hamala. Okay, the, to fix the dam, how to clean it up every day? How to fix the dam? Okay, call somebody, call somebody to clean the house, clean the, the, dry the house. Okay, to dry the house with the, now, now we don't have to call somebody, we have to buy the dehumidifier. Right, we can buy a dehumidifier. This machine there, you put it there, it will just absorb all the, the moisture, right? Okay, to buy a dehumidifier. Anyone else? What advice? Huh? Okay, so they say they to change the house is one possibility. Another one is say the to buy a dehumidifier. Another possibility is go to the doctor and the best of doctor, Apollo or where? Huh? Ames. Okay, to go to a good doctor. Okay, good doctor may give me some medicines. Again, I'll go back. Again, the same dampness is there, the problems there. And the house, to change the house nowadays, the real estate people, they charge you a lot. It's very expensive, right? And I have so many books. Again, from the third floor going down, it's very difficult, right? Okay, so now, Tapala, what advice would you give you as a very experienced advisor? Okay, let us all listen to Tapala's advice. We'll try to find the uh, problem of the like where the leak is happening. Yeah. Okay, the dampness, as Tabula said, this dampness for sure is not coming from the ground because I'm on the third floor. You're getting it? It's not coming from the. If I'm the ground floor, then it can be coming from the ground. It's very complicated. Whereas third floor means it's not from the ground. Which means that the dampness is for sure not from any other source other than the leakage. You getting it? Pipe leakage. So just track where this dampness comes from, where this where this leakage is. Because the leakage must be very subtle, right? It's just creating a dampness. It's not like water oozing out. Water oozing out is very obvious. Because they're very, they're just a dampness means there's a, a very small leakage happening. You check it, you find it by by with 20 rupees what? MC. MC, fix it. You don't have to change the house, right? <laughs> Your name? Jen Janika. Janika, right. Okay. So Janika will be very happy that okay, my, now my brother doesn't have to change the house. 20 rupees will fix the problem. Okay, so the problem is, so the point is, once you identify the problem, to remove the problem, don't just go for the symptomatic treatment. Symptomatic treatment means, is the dampness, remove the dampness, clean it up, you know, like this. Go track the cause, track the root cause. That's so important. In most of the cases, many of the doctors, Right? How do you know that the doctors are very experienced or not? One thing is very simple. If you have a constant, say, the sore coming on your face, pimples coming on your face, sore coming on your lips and so forth, the doctors who just give you medicines to, you know, to apply something there or the medicines to the pimples, these things are not good doctors. First, you have to, doctors who advise you to go for blood check, blood test. 
blood test on that basis to see where the real problem is, whether there's some problem with the kidney, some problem with the hormones, some problem with the some way the brain secretion, right? Not being able to what say they separate the the the, the, the bodily residues, right? Okay, so the doctor who is able to really go to analyze the deeper, analyze the deeper cause of this, that is a good doctor who just maybe gives some medicine, right, just to remove this problem, we do some, say, the plaster, no, this is not a good doctor. So good doctor will look for the fun cause. So the cause must be identified. Right? Truth of the suffering, after knowing the suffering, you are fed up with the suffering, to get into the suffering, you have to get into the cause of suffering. Unless you get into the cause of suffering, there's no point in trying to remove the suffering. It's all going to be symptomatic problem, symptomatic treatment, it's not going to be the ultimate treatment. Okay. Now, once the cause is removed, then what happens? Once the root of the poisonous tree is cut, however millions of poisonous leaves they are going there, they will all dry automatically. So therefore we have to cut the root. Once the root is cut, then all the suffering will cease. That is the cessation of suffering. Number three, cessation of suffering, the once the root is cut, through the, the cause of suffering is cut, then the all the miseries will cease, all suffering will cease. That is the truth, truth number three, the truth of the cessation of suffering. Okay, how to, how to achieve that state of suffering, a state of the cessation of suffering? How to achieve that? You have to employ the path, you have to employ the remedy to overcome the cause of suffering. What is that remedy? The path which leads to the cessation of suffering. You're getting it? So these these are the four noble truths. Okay, with these four noble truths, now we have to learn what is known as the, the little technical part, known as the 12, the, the 12, say in Tibetan we call it Deva Jungi. No. So technically it is known as the, the repetitions. So let's say the okay, they were me. Okay, let's say twelve statements, twelve statements, twelve statements related to the related to the four noble truths. Twelve statements. So these twelve statements can be classified into three groups, three sets, three sets of four statements. Three into four is twelve. So the first set is known as the the, the say the, the four statements four statements pertaining to the identification of the four noble truths. Okay, let's say this again. The, the first set is the first set of the first set is the four statements. Okay, first set, let's make it very short. The first set is pertaining to the the teaching, teaching pertaining to the identification of the four noble truths. Okay, to put it very simply, the first set is identifying the four noble truths. The first set is what? The set of identifying the four noble truths. So four. Second set is the set pertaining to the practice of the four noble truths. Second set is, once you identify them, then you have to practice. Practice of the four noble truths. Second set. Then the third set is pertaining to the result, the, the res, result of the practice of the four noble truths. After one you want to practice, what result will you get? The first one is what? First set is identifying the four noble truths. What is the second set? Practice. practice of the four noble truths. Practice pertaining to four noble truths. Then what is the third one? The result. The result. Result of the practice of the four noble truths. Okay, this is what we have to know. Four, 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 forty-three is twelve. So the first one is very simple. It's very simple. The thing is, after learning these things, then see how to apply this in our life. That is the challenge, and that will give us the benefit. Okay, for that we have to know.
Without knowing this, we will not know how to apply them. Okay, so first, the, what's the first one? Identifying, Identifying the phone number choice. Identify the phone number choice is very simple. The Buddha said, this is the truth of suffering. This is the truth of cause of suffering. Then, this is the truth of the cessation of suffering. And, this is the truth of the path leading to the cessation. These are the first four statements, set of the first four statements. Done. What is the second part, second set? The teachings pertaining to the practice. Set of the teachings pertaining to the practice related to the Four Noble Truths. So what practice to do? Once you identify the Four Noble Truths, what practice to do? So the Buddha said, okay, this is very important. Number two is extremely important. Set number two is very important. Truth of suffering is to be identified. Truth of suffering is to be identified. The truth of the cause of suffering is to be abandoned. What is number three? The truth of the cessation of suffering is to be actualized. Then that the truth of the path of the cessation is to be meditated upon. Meditated upon. Let me say this again. The truth of suffering is to be act identified. What is second one? The truth of the cause of suffering is to be abandoned. Number three, the truth of the cessation of suffering is to be actualized. Number four, the truth of the path leading to the cessation is to be meditated upon. This is so important. You're getting it? Suffering, identify the suffering, abandon the cause of suffering, actualize the cessation of suffering, and meditate upon the path leading to the cessation. So this is what we should practice. You're getting it? What we should practice. Okay. Set number two. What is set number three? Okay. Pertaining to the result. The result of the practice. What result will you get if you practice the if you practice those practices related to the Four Church? The results. For the result, the Buddha said, this is very interesting. The truth of suffering is to be identified, but there's nothing to be identified. Truth of suffering is to be identified, but there's nothing to be identified. What is the second one? The truth of cause of suffering is to be abandoned, but there's nothing to be abandoned. Right? What is the third? The truth of cessation is to be truth of cessation of suffering is to be actualized. But there's nothing to be actualized. What is number four? The truth of path leading to cessation is to be meditated upon, but there's nothing to be to be meditated upon. You're getting it? Okay. It's quite enigmatic. It's quite irony, right? It has to be identified, but there's nothing to identify it. So it's very it's irony there. Okay, so we have to we have to study these four things. We have to study these three three sets. You're getting it? Okay, we'll stop here. So we'll continue the next Friday. Any questions that you might have? Any question that you might have? Any question that you might have? Anyone? 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 If question? Any question that you might have? Any questions? Pertaining to we say you of the you might have some questions people might be coming you know asking some questions to you in your college or in your workplace right any questions okay if you have any questions so this is say next time when you come any questions you might have you can bring those questions up here that will be very helpful it's good for me I can learn from these questions and good for others. We can also hear the question and reflect on these questions as well. Okay, very good. From the page you want to do the end dedication prayer? We we'll do the end dedication prayers. Please turn to page 278. <clears throat> In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful, generous, intense, and just so, please remain until some sort of ends. 
just as the brain magistry and son of the earth have to realize things as they are, also I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow the perfect example. I dedicate all these rules of virtue with the dedication praised as the best, by the victorious ones thus born of the three times, so that I might perform the noble body's activities. May the Supreme Holy Chaitanya has not arisen, arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase forevermore. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of the Guru Buddha and lead all beings without exception into that enlightened state. I dedicate the merit thus gathered towards the realization of the deeds and the prayers of all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the three times and to the upholding of the Dharma of teaching and realization. May I in all lives, through the course of this merit, never separate from the four wheels of the Mahayana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path, renunciation, bodhicitta, perfect view, and the two stages. With the wish to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach full enlightenment. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. I go for the refuge to the triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha God in my heart. The power of the union of emptiness and compassion is lucidly explained by the protector of both the dharma and the beings of the small land. You are the lotus holder then, Gyatso. We supplicate you that your wishes are fulfilled spontaneously. May the operations of evil thoughts and deeds of the negative forces of humans and non-humans who harbor malice through perverted prayers against the teachings of the Buddhas be totally vanquished through the power of the truth of the three truths. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent dharma by completing the qualities of the stages and paths. May I quickly attain the state of Vajradhara. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by Alim and Jushri and be able to uphold the Dharma in general and the teachings on dependent origination in particular, even at the cost of my life. Thank you.